Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell to honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the Ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. The late, great John Wayne stated these words in his album that was recorded in 1977, America, why I love her. Face the flag, son, and face reality. Our strengths and our freedoms are based in unity. The flag is but a symbol, son, of the world's greatest nation. And as long as it keeps flying, there's a cause for celebration. So do what you've got to do, but always keep in mind... A lot of people believe in peace, but there are the other kind. If we want to keep these freedoms, we may have to fight again. God forbid, but if we do, let's always fight to win. For the fate of a loser is futile and it's bare. No love, no peace, just misery and despair. Face the flag, son. And thank God it's still there. John Wayne. Here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America, followed by a patriot with our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning, good morning. And a good morning to you and your family. Zeb at the Ranch, I'm Zeb Bell, and welcome with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. And, of course, a big spring tire sale going on right now. And also some of our great advertisers like Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Call them at 734-6969. Without further ado, I hope we've got a patriot on the line with our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Yes, sir. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I thank you, Doug, very much for doing the pledge this morning, because I think after that John Wayne dissertation that he had in his album, it was fitting. Thank you, sir. All right, sir. Have a good day. Thank you very much. It is time for the weather, and the weather brought to you by Ramsey Heating and Electric, offering rebates on qualified Lennox home comfort systems. Whether it's a gas furnace, air conditioner, or a heat pump, you and your family will enjoy the comfort. Call them at 678-0459 and learn how Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox can save you money. Here's Gina. We are just in front of a storm front that happens to be moving in. It's going to be warm today, but the clouds are going to stick around, and it's going to be a little bit breezy. Out of the southwest, right around 13 miles an hour. Cloudy skies for today, high of 67, tonight low of 46. Now, tomorrow, that's when the rain showers are going to kick in, at least by the afternoon. Breezy as well out of the southwest, right around 13 miles an hour. 90% chance of rain showers, high of 60, overnight low of 40. Those rain showers will be sticking around for Saturday, and winds are going to be picking up as well out of the southwest right around 20 miles an hour high at 50 overnight low of 32 for sunday winds still going to be there out of the west right around 25 miles an hour mostly sunny skies high at 50 with an overnight low of 29 that is your weather for zeb at the ranch windy 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 oh my well as weather brought to you by ramsey heating and electric and lennox hey right now merv may come on in here let's sell some cattle all right 
hey, good set of steer calves there. Here to get all the 31, 31, 31, 31, 31, 31, 31, 31, 31, 32. That's the chant of the world's best auctioneer, and that's Merv May at the Burley Livestock Sale Yard, 1100 Occidental Avenue in Burley. You bet sale time today, 11 a.m. Burley Livestock Sale Yard, 1100 Occidental Avenue in Burley. Merv May, Cade Roggy, Lance Udy, the sale that works for you. Let's take a look at some of the run that's going to go through the uh, scales this morning. Ward Dairy over at Burley bringing in 50 head of eight to 900 Holstein steers. Ted Tracy up at Elmo bringing down 80 head of 575 pound heifers. And Spencer Land and Livestock up at Yost bringing in 140 head of 750 pound heifers. And uh, Bruce and Jared Bedke, good morning over to Oakley. 50 head of mixed yearlings. Butcher cows coming in from TLK Dairy, Oak Valley Dairy, and Acme Dairy, and sale time at 11 o'clock this morning at the sale that works for you, Burley Livestock Sale Yard, number to call, 678-9411. Merv, let's sell those steers. All right, hey, good set of steer calves there, here to get all the 31, one and a half, 31, one and a half, and 32, two and a half, three and a half, 134, four and a half, five and a half, and a half, and a half, and a half, 135, 50, 135, and a half, selling dollar 35, Zeb Mel, get bottom again. Oh, man, I guess. Hey, Hey, thanks, Mer. Appreciate it. And calls are welcome. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Want to kind of give you a heads up as to something going on on this program later on this morning at 1032. We are going to have the nationally known author of the book called Twilight in America, Martin Moyer. And uh, Martin's been on my program a couple of times before, and he wrote the book called Twilight in America. It's the untold story of Islamic terrorist training camps right here inside America. And he was recently on Fox News the other night, and it piqued my interest to get him back and give an update to his book. And so he's going to be on at 1032 this morning. Don't you miss it. Oh, by the way, don't forget Denny's Restaurant. You know, I've got a picture of all the delicious new burgers that are available over at Denny's Restaurant right now. And I am looking, and to be very honest with you, drooling over the new bacon gouda burger. <laughs> I have, I made it a promise to myself, even though it's not on my diet, I am going to get in there and I've got to try one of those. Absolutely phenomenal. They got a whole list of brand new burgers and all of this at Denny's Restaurant, America's Diner at 611 Overland and Burley and 291 Pole Line Road in Twin Falls. Oh my, breakfast, lunch and dinner, great people, what a menu at Denny's America's Diner. You stop in and see them today. And while we have just a moment, and then we'll start taking some of your calls this morning, also our thanks go out to Ramsey Heating and Electric for all your heating and electrical needs. You know, you know they've been there for over 50 years serving you with the best of heating and cooling and electrical needs. I don't care if you need one light bulb or whatever, they've got it for you right there at Ramsey Heating and Electric. Open 730 to 5, Monday through Friday. Number to call is 678 Nine. And give them a call today. They'll have your order waiting on the counter. Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Now it is your turn. Give me a call. You know, I talked to, and I'm going to be really careful and really vague because I don't want to embarrass this person, but uh, I talked to a local Democrat yesterday. Wow. <laughs> the hatred and the bad vibes that the Democrats have over the last election, it's, uh, it's something absolutely that I didn't even anticipate on a local basis would be versed as loud and hateful as, as some of the remarks I heard yesterday. They feel that they should be in power with Hillary Clinton. They honestly, this person, and I've heard this from others across the country, they feel that they were robbed of the election, even though it was done in a completely legal fashion. And I'm tiring of all this talk about how Russia swayed the election, Russia did this. Show me the proof, and I'll be the first to apologize on this issue. There is no proof. 
And their crybaby attitude uh, doesn't really cover the fact that Hillary was a absolute sick candidate to run for the uh, Democratic nomination for the presidency. She was not capable and still is not capable of lighting the candle for that party. And I guess the Democrats can't accept reality, and they can't accept that their platform, and this is really important to say, they can't accept that their platform of ideas and goals and values, or the lack of, are not appreciated by the United States. And the hatred and the vitriol and the just the animus that's going on right now in this country that is being perpetrated by the Democrats because they lost, it's got to stop. It has got to stop. I was a very unhappy camper when Obama won the election back in 2008. I'm very open up front about it. I did not want that man to win the role of being a dog catcher. And I still think that he was highly underqualified to even have that job. But I never, ever had the hatred and the vitriol. And I did, on many occasions, come out and support various issues at certain times with his administration. Not many, but a few. But my goodness, the hate of this, the Democratic Party is absolutely unbelievable. Caller, I'll be right there. Stand by, please. Don't forget Barry Equipment and Rental. I don't care if you want one of those big Doosan loaders or if you're looking to buy a Walker mower, 0% for 48 months, whatever. Those Doosan loaders, by the way, they can get in there at the dairies and construction sites. Woo, baby, they do the job. They have all the equipment to get the job done right. Barry Equipment and Rental, sales, service, and parts. Locations at South Lincoln and Jerome, Addison Avenue West in Twin Falls and 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. Absolutely the best of equipment rentals, retail equipment sales, and nice, knowledgeable people. At Barry Equipment and Rental, you stop in and see those good folks today. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Mr. Bell. How are you doing this time? Uh, I'm good, George. How are you? Good. You know, this is a little off the subject, but yesterday I was out there remembering fence, put my cows in it for the summer. And remember the little old kill there, the little birds? Yeah. Uh, they was running around out there, and I can remember as a child, chasing them for hours and hours, thinking I could catch them. And that was our entertainment as a child. It wasn't all this television and uh, electronics and what have you. And so it was just kind of refreshing to put a smile on my face because I was running around, around out there yesterday. You know, sometimes the simple things in life that God has given us to appreciate are the most, uh, I hesitate to use the word entertaining, but the most memorizing uh, and appreciated events in our lifetime. And I know exactly what you're talking about. And uh, I appreciate that very much because back in Wisconsin, I can remember when I was growing up on the farm, sitting out there in the middle of the pasture and just kind of watching all those birds and they'd be scurrying around through the grass to protect their nests and everything. Uh, I agree with you. Yeah, that was our entertainment, yeah, because the child growing up we didn't have a TV and had a radio at work once in a while. So our entertainment was homemade. I remember chasing for hours and hours and days and days after those little birds. And I've got the greatest respect for them. Yeah, absolutely. George, appreciate it. And by the way, when the program's over this morning, please give me a call. Okay, and you know that saying you got the way things were is the way things ought to be? That is one great example. I appreciate that, George. God bless you, man. Thanks so much. Thank you. Have a good day, sir. All right, sir. You know, that was a nice call. You know, I do remember a lot of the things growing up. You know, I, I grew up on a farm. And uh, uh, quite frankly, we had to do our certain chores. That always came first. And what we wanted to do for our entertainment came secondary. But there were a lot of things that I still, at my old age, can appreciate and respect that uh, as part of the chores... I'll remember as my fondest memories growing up. I mean, I always thought it was a lot of work to do this, that, and the other thing. 
And now I look back, and like I said, those are the warmest times that I can remember. And uh, a lot more than some goofy TV show that I was in a hurry to finish the chores and get in the house and try to see. Anyway, calls are welcome, 436 2244 What are your thoughts on any subject this morning? Nancy Pelosi did it again yesterday. I uh, really, really, Nancy, I don't think is the brightest or the most clever person that ever got into politics. We'll tell you why in just a moment. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. My goodness, they are helping you get back to being you. Oh, I know that you've been outside probably. And have been uh, working hard out in the yard and uh, trying to get all the trees trimmed. And you've been carrying the limbs and building a little fire or whatever. And, oh, my goodness, all of a sudden, the next morning, you woke up and you said, holy cow, does my back hurt? Well, maybe you've overdone. Well, you better call Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation today at 678-1191. 678-1191. And they can help you with all their physical therapists, all the exercises. they got the hydrotherapy pool. They've got it all for you. The benefit of helping you get back to being you at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation in Burley. You give them a call, 678-1191 today. And let's see what else have I got cooking. Oh, i got to tell you real quick about uh, Scott Gano Landscaping and Sprinkler Service. Yes, it is time to give them a call and talk to them about maybe putting in a brand new sprinkler service for this year or repairing your old one so you can be ready to go. You better believe it. When you want to turn the water on, it's going to be there. Or maybe doing some fruit tree trimming or getting rid of, like I was mentioning a minute ago, all those uh, trees that need to be trimmed and maybe now it's time for some landscaping ideas for you and maybe if we get a lot of snow this next winter to help keep the snow out of your basement holy cow you better call him scott gano landscaping and sprinkler service 438-2485 call that number today 438-2485 scott gano landscaping and sprinkler service wheels over at the station turn the uh the feed line down a little bit if you will that's coming into my headsets it is really popping hot this morning so if you do that for me i'd sure appreciate it all right calls are welcome and appreciated nancy pelosi remember yesterday i talked to you about an interview that ivanka trump had done with cbs's gail king and the word came up complicit And Gail King was trying to lead Ivanka Trump, Donald Trump's daughter, and she is so professional and so educated and so proper. I just really think a lot of this young lady. But anyway, Gail King from CBS, Oprah's dear friend, was trying to lead Ivanka Trump into a dark area, always with kind of a a conviction in her tone, like uh, her dad was this, her dad was that, her dad was negative, her dad shouldn't have won the presidency. And then she used the word, are you complicit? with your father and what he's trying to do as president. And Ivanka, and I'm paraphrasing right now, please, I'm not, don't hold me to the exact verb, but she said, well, if you mean by complicit that I am trying to join in and trying to do good for the American people, yes, I guess in that sense of the word that you put in there, I'm complicit. Well, then the the left has just turned this thing all around. Because complicit, of course, has meant, you know, that maybe you're uh, putting your thoughts and your strengths and your personality and your efforts behind something that's illegal or not for the benefit of good. Uh, The left has turned this whole thing around. And Nancy Pelosi came out, and she is not exactly a wordsmith or not exactly uh, exemplary of intelligence. And she tried to twist this around in her own words and make Ivanka Trump look less yesterday. And you know what? She failed. 
Nancy Pelosi just absolutely came out looking like a soiled rag because of what she had said and how she tried to turn this around. Why can't the Democrats and why can't the left just accept the fact that there is a new sheriff in town and he's got some new deputies and they're trying to run a new administration? Accept it. They're going to be in there for the tenure of their office of four years. And basically, sit down, shut up, and maybe look at the holes in your screen door that caused all the flies to get in during the last election. Calls welcome, 436-224-4186-927-4587. Come on, give me a call. While I'm waiting for your call that I know is coming in, I also want to remind you about our dear, dear friend, and I think she's going to be on the radio with us next week, I believe. And that's, of course, uh, the doctor of hearing, and that's Dr. Christine Pickup. Oh, with Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids, and they're located right across from the Minidoka Hospital Emergency Room and the number to call for a hearing screening appointment, 312-0957. That number again, 312-0957. And uh, they are the only locally owned and independent hearing health care practice in all of southern Idaho. So call her today. Dr. Pickup at Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids at 312-0957. And by the way, too, let's not forget what's going on with our good friends. Uh, And I want to say that first and foremost, we are getting real close to all the irrigation time. And we've got a lot of great people in this area that need the services, naturally, of our friends at Magic Valley Irrigation. And we want to thank Jeff and the crew. I'm going to get their paper here. Hold on just a second. 44 East, 500 South of Burley. Jeff and the whole crew know that you're you're outside busy as can be, and they look forward to serving you with furnishing all the U-bends and the handline risers and the manufacturing of wheel line elbows and so much more. They are the experts. Call them at 678-3101. Magic Valley Irrigation, 44 East, 500 South of Burley. You give them a call today. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Deb. I just wanted to comment on the Nancy Pelosi and some of the things that have been said recently in the news. I remember when George W. H. W. the second Bush boy, when he left office and handed the keys to Obama, he was gracious, he was caring, and I think he said to the public, give this guy a chance, he's the next president. But what is happening now? The Democrat left town, he's out of the job, and now it's the conservative people's time. And I don't think that there's been a lot of pleasantries exchanged by anybody. No, and I'll... They don't lead. They don't lead by professionalism. They lead by making everybody mad at them. And I don't think, Chris, that I've ever seen in my lifetime the hatred and the animosity that's being shown and exhibited by the Democrats, even on a local basis. The the person I talked to yesterday, it was just amazing how the personality had changed. It's almost like, you don't deserve to be in office. You don't deserve to be in control. We're Democrats. We're elitist, and we're smarter than you. Whoa, what happened? happen in this country uh yeah and another thing is why did obama stay in washington dc his wife hated it there quote unquote and i thought he was just really anxious to get out of that putrid city too you know, what is he doing? You know, Chris, the you really bring up a good point, and there are a lot of experts, far more expert, expert than I am, that have claimed that uh, there is a cause for concern about having Obama in Washington, D.C., and what he's doing behind the scenes to basically create and uh, promote a shadow government, which is basically trying to 
turn over everything that Trump tries to do with his administration. And there's a new book out, and uh, I am going to try to get the author on in the next couple of weeks, as a matter of fact. And this author, his name is David Garrow, and he wrote a book about just recently about Barack Obama and all the unknown activities and happenstances that we never knew about Obama before he became president. And I think the gist of the book is going to make us question as to why. Why we were so stupid to let that man be president for eight years. Well, to begin with, oh, we had to elect a black person, the Americans. And we showed that we could, and we put up with him for eight years. Now then, I think it is time to start digging in his basement. Well, it's past time to dig in his basement. And I'll tell you something else uh, about this book and about what I think it might do. And you mentioned it was time to elect a black person. I can remember vividly, and you've been a listener for a long time, that in the first election back in uh, 2007, prior to the eight election for Obama, I was advocating that Condoleezza Rice run for the presidency And a lot of people that were on the left, they evidently couldn't remember or realize that Condoleezza Rice was black. I was advocating that she was the, should be the president. But when I came out against Obama, and I really slammed him for his lack of being anything qualified as an Illinois senator, that's when they played the race card on me. And the Idaho Democratic Party and the Times News and other so-called leadership in the area, they called me a racist. But they weren't smart enough to realize that if I was advocating for Condoleezza Rice, how in the world could they play the race card? These people are not the smartest or the sharpest knives in the drawer, let me tell you. The race isn't so important. It's the letter D or the letter R. That's exactly right. Hey, Chris, I always appreciate your calls. Thank you so much. Uh All righty. Thank you. Hey, Minicash Sales with Zach. I talked to Zach the other day. Good old boy, good old boy right there. Minicash Sales, 1321 East Main Street in Burley, right across from the airport. Number to call, 878-2091. And I want to urge you to check out this luxury vinyl planking. It is beautiful, beautiful stuff. And uh, Zach can also help, over, help send over contractors to do the installation work. And if you need an overhead door, or an interior door, or you need to upgrade your windows to the nice, very energy-efficient western windows, he can help you at Minicasha Sales, 1321 East Main Street in Burley, and they are the sponsors of Dr. History on Tuesdays. You know what's going to happen a week from today? They are going to have that great big Southern Idaho Women's Expo, and that's going to be on the 13th, next week Thursday, sponsored by the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce, Idaho Central Credit Union, and Idaho Housing and Finance. Now, it's going to start at 9 o'clock on Thursday morning, the 13th, at the Burley Best Western Inn, and uh, I urge you to get your tickets in advance. They're $20 in advance and 30 at the door, so save yourself 10 bucks. They're going to have outstanding speakers, and it's just going to be a great day. Southern Idaho Women's Expo, and call the chamber office, 679-4793, for your tickets today. Okay? Take care of that right now. Calls welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. Give me a call. I saw something that was very distressing on television, and if anybody else saw this, I want you to chime in and, and give me a call, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. But there was a reporter on the campus of Harvard University, and you would think when you say the words Harvard University that you're looking at the creme de la creme, the cream of the crop, of the top thinkers of young people in our country? Uh, Not so much. (laughs) Oh, boy, this reporter went up to a lot of these kids on campus, and he asked, who is more dangerous, Donald Trump 
or ISIS. And I was absolutely shocked. Most all of these kids said Donald Trump for his policies. And caller, I'll be right there. One student even said terrorism is not that big a deal. And another student said, well, I guess Trump is more dangerous because ISIS hasn't done him any harm. Holy cow. Where is the outward thinking of our young adults? Not there. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Zeb. You know, Chris brought up something really that made me scratch my gray matter about Obama. Now, this you can tell to your leftist friends if you want to. But Obama, he stayed in Washington, D.C., and he built this compound. It has a wall around it. I've never seen it. I just hear it talked about. Those Democrats that are so adamant about him not building a wall, why did Obama build a wall around his? It's to keep out the undesirable. And I think that's what we're trying to do. Well, if we'd have kept out the undesirables, he would have never been president in the first place. (laughs) But anyway, irregardless of that, uh, yeah, it is kind of a a hypocritical attitude about they want to, the Obamas want to keep the riffraff out and away from their property, et cetera. Yeah, I know. You can use that analogy for the wall on the southern border or whatever. Yeah. But the fact is that what Trump said has been distorted so many times about uh, keeping out the riffraff and the murderers and the rapists and the drug dealers, etc. It's true. We are getting a bunch of absolutely criminal lowlifes crossing our border daylight, daily. And we've got to stop this uh, infiltration and saturation of negative people coming in here to do harm and hurt the value of our country. And I don't care if they need a wall. I don't care if they want to put up a wire fence that is absolutely the highest of voltage. I don't care if they want to put our soldiers on the southern border. I don't care. But I want this influx of negativity that's coming into our country to stop. That's exactly the way I feel, too. And, you know, when you have a family of four children or five or six, whatever, you cannot tell when they're born who's going to be outstanding and who's going to not be so outstanding. It's the same way with these border people. There's a lot of good people that want to come across the border, but you can't tell it just by looking at them. Well, not only that, but if you're going to break the law and not go through the legal channels of coming here to the United States, you are... And nobody's going to change my verbiage on this. This is the way it is. You are an illegal alien. You are not a citizen of this country. You're an alien. You broke the law when you came across the border. You're illegal. So you make the distinction, Keith. Illegal alien is the term that they are. But there's some some people, and they are in Mexico, and they're called coyotes. And they're recruiting these people to come across the border because... They make a lot of money. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, there's no question that the Coyotes are uh, making a lot of money. But then on the other hand, Keith, I mean, hey, listen, we have laws and we have borders. And for the absolute insane people that want to see a relaxing of our borders and anybody come in, anybody can uh, accept our government programs, our welfare system, wait a minute. Somebody's got to pay the bill. And that's the taxpayers. And we can't just absorb the other nation's people and problems coming in so that we have to pay for them. I've had enough. I don't want to pay for anybody else. You know, I remember 20 years ago when we used to go to Canada to buy pickups. And every time we'd come to the border, the agent would question us. Sometimes they'd ask us to get out of the car and just to look around and everything, and we felt kind of put out about that. But, you know, that is just good, sound security. Yeah. 
Well, you know, I've uh, I've gone across the border up into Canada quite a bit. I've been into Mexico about three, four times. Uh, I don't mind if they ask stringent questions. I don't mind if they take a look at everything in your vehicle or what you're trying to bring back across the border, etc. Hey, i got to do a bunch of commercials, Keith. I thank you for your call. God bless you, man. Thanks. You do the same. All right, sir. Have hey, a wonderful weekend. And the very same to you and Nancy. Thank you so much. Hey, don't forget Ag Express. They're looking for drivers. That's right. And they're looking for full and part-time positions. And retired folks are welcome to apply. My goodness, they'll work around your schedule two or three days a week. Whatever works best for you. Hey, right now, and remember, you're home every night, and you're using new and maintained equipment, vacation schedules, benefit programs, oh, including major medical, you better give them a call. Dale and Paul at 438-8886, Allen in Twin Falls at 731-2495, and Russ in Burley at 431-7175. Ag Express is looking for drivers. Ag Express is looking for you. Oh, and by the way, too, as I stated yesterday on my program, we're very, very blessed to have uh, the folks over at Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center at 924 Christian Way in Rupert uh, advertise on our program, and we really appreciate that. They are the only locally owned and operated assisted living facility in the Minicasha area, and they are able to provide one-on-one care and so much more. They really care for their residents and they take them out to community events and they've got a beautiful patio in the backyard and they have barbecues all through the summer they invite the public to visit their facility anytime autumn haven assisted living center 924 christian way in rupert the number 436 3200 they're small compared to some but with a bigger heart than most all right, calls are welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. Give me a jingle on the landline, love to hear from you. And, uh, you know, these students, it just brought to mind when I was listening to these Harvard students being interviewed. They've, because of their age now, at 19, 20, 21 years of age, they've never had major responsibilities. They've never had a major crisis that they might have to get involved in. They've never had anything, and I mean this in all sense of these words, anything that they were really responsible for. And for them to sit there and say that terrorism is not a big deal or ISIS hasn't done them any harm or Trump, oh boy, he's more dangerous because of his policies than ISIS and terrorism, etc. They don't know. They absolutely do not know and understand how devious and deadly the world really is. They're pretty doggone naive. Weather forecast brought to you this hour by the Urgent Cares. And that's Riverview Urgent Care, 382 North Overland and Burley. And Twin Falls Urgent Care, 2392 Addison Avenue East in Twin and Jerome Urgent Care at 133 West Avenue A in Jerome. Oh, my goodness, minor emergencies, major care. They really do care about your health, and they want to make sure that you're all comfy. You might have had a sprain or a strain or a cut or maybe got the flu bug or whatever. Well, listen, they're there seven days a week serving you. Like I said, minor emergencies, major care the urgent cares right now here's gina with the weather we are just in front of a storm front that happens to be moving in it's going to be warm today but the clouds are going to stick around and it's going to be a little bit breezy out of the southwest right around 13 miles an hour cloudy skies for today high of 67 tonight low 46 now tomorrow that's when the rain showers are going to kick in at least by the afternoon breezy as well out of the southwest right around 13 miles an hour 90 percent chance of rain showers high of 60 overnight low 40 those rain showers will be sticking around for saturday and winds are going to be picking up as well out of the southwest right around 20 miles an hour high of 50 overnight low of 32 for sunday Wind's still going to be there out of the west, right around 25 miles an hour, mostly sunny skies, high of 50 with an overnight low of 29. 
That is your weather for Zebeth Ranch. And Gina, thank you very much. And don't forget the Urgent Cares with their in-house labs and x-ray at Riverview Urgent Care in Burley, Twin Falls Urgent Care in Twin, and Jerome Urgent Care in Jerome. It's really true, minor emergencies, major care. All right, give me a call, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Give me a jingle on the landline. Also, want to remind you quickly, Lennox, I bit my tongue, Lennox, of course, with our friends Ramsey Heating and Electric. And don't forget, Ramsey's are offering rebates on qualified Lennox home comfort systems. Whether it's a gas furnace, an air conditioner, or a heat pump, you and your family will enjoy the comfort. Call them at 678-0459. And let Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox save you money. All right, it's your turn. Give me a call. 436 2244 1 866 927 4587. Let's see what else is in there. Oh, this mess in Syria. This is so devastating and so inhumane. Syria's Bashar Assad. A murdering butcher of his own people. And like Idi Amin. Remember Idi Amin from years gone by in Africa? Oh, I mean, what a butcher, what a killer. It's absolutely sick. Dropping chemical weapons of gas and ammonia and other weapons, along with these barrel bombs. When I heard what a barrel bomb was, my stomach turned over. He's dropping these barrel bombs that are about 20 feet off the ground. They explode and they are loaded. These barrel bombs are loaded with shrapnel on the inside. And they explode and go in a horizontal movement and just rip apart and kill everything in its path. And the babies, the little babies, the children and adults uh, at random dying like this and you know i'm gonna point my finger right at obama do you remember this man said that well if assad uses any chemical weapons that is a line in the sand a red line in the sand that cannot be crossed and we will take action he did nothing obama did nothing of course that's indicative of his whole presidency but he did nothing and now after only five months in office now of course i should say four months they're coming after donald trump and the left is screaming why aren't you doing something about assad why aren't you doing something about syria we've got to stop this oh my goodness this carnage this mess was created and the cancer was helped grow by Obama and his administration and his burying his head in the sand. But something has to be done. Something has to be done. And I know this is going to come as a shock to a lot of people, but for the first time I think in my life, I agree with Senator John McCain when he said yesterday, Shoot down Assad's planes. No more murder. No more mayhem. And take him out. I couldn't agree more. Calls are welcome. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Hey, the big 45th annual salmon select horse and mule sales going on in salmon at the lemhi county fairgrounds today they're going to have the great big parade and then tonight they're going to have the wolf howling contest and the mule sale calcutta tomorrow at six they're going to have the salmon select mule sale saturday the great big horse sale at one o'clock in the afternoon oh my goodness don't miss it get on up there they've got mules coming in from all over the country they've got horses coming in from all over the country gonna be a dandy 45th annual salmon select horse and mule sale this weekend at the lemhi county fairgrounds in salmon i mean a lot of good livestock up there oh and by the way thanks go out to our friends at the golden valley warehouse hello friends over at golden valley warehouse you know they've been in business for well over 30 years Mm -hmm. 
family business, and uh, they are known for providing the highest quality seed available. Yes, sir, Bob. They're located at 1000 South, 468 West of Burley, and the numbers to call, 678-7324. You get a hold of old Scott and the rest of the crew at Golden Valley Warehouse, south of Burley, excellent people with the best of seed. All right, it's your turn. Give me a call. 436-2244-1866-927-4587. You know, I, I noticed that uh, this story was in the USA Today newspaper yesterday. And it shows how the left has absolutely gone to any and all lengths to try to condemn and damn President Trump. You know what? A couple of weeks ago... Rory McIlroy, he played a round of golf with Donald Trump. Okay? Donald Trump invited him to play golf with him down at one of the golf courses in Florida, and Rory thought it would be a great opportunity to be with the President of the United States. Oh, my goodness. Since that golf game, The left has come out, and they are absolutely ripping Rory McIlroy. And a reporter for the USA Today by the name of Christine Brennan, a leftist antagonizer that writes for, of all things, the sports page for the USA Today, she said, still feeling uncomfortable uh she's talking about rory mcelroy accepting the invitation to go play golf with donald trump she said yet still felt uncomfortable playing a round of golf with a man who bragged about sexually assaulting women mocked a disabled person and carried on a week-long battle with a gold star family among other things so this reporter says i thought i would ask how rory could basically in my own language stoop so low as to play with the president and ever since this time Rory McIlroy has been chided on the golf course. He's been belittled and bemoaned by the left. And it's a shame. You can't play golf with the President of the United States? And the left-wing nuts are going to come out and try to destroy your career? And that's exactly what they've done to this young man. And he was asked if he would play with uh, President Trump again in the future. And he said, you know, after all the headaches and the heartaches that I've suffered, I really don't know if I would. That's a shame. The left is absolutely insidious. Calls are welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. Let's also tell you about what's going on with the big spring tire sale right now at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Oh, my goodness sakes, doing the right thing matters, and they do the right thing. They're having a big spring tire sale. And they've got many, many, many of their tires on sale, like the Eclipse for your car. Oh, this is a good, good all-season traction tire, advanced tread design. And it's on sale starting at just sixty-one seventy-four. I am not kidding. You get in there and check it out today. And also, the best in brake service. You know they've got the best in brake service. Front end alignment, shocks and struts, all of this and so much more along with batteries. But service reigns supreme. They are the best lane and rupert dave on blue lakes and twin mike and buell mike and jerome the twist family and paul daniel on pole line in twin falls and randy on overland in burley Mm -mm. nobody does it better than your magic valley les schwab tire center stop in and see them today I got time for one more call. 436 2244 1866 927 4587. Susan Rice, <laughs> wow, she is defiant in her alleged crimes. And I, I just have never in my life seen a public figure kind of stick her chin out and say, well, maybe I lied, but. Who cares? <laughs> That's the attitude that she pervades. It's typical of the responses we watched uh, with other Democrats that got with their hand caught in the till. And she doesn't care. I mean, I think, honestly, she's going to stay defiant and not admit or do anything. And even if they find out she is guilty, 
of leaking information that could have hurt private American citizens. I don't think she really cares. Well, we're going to have at 1030 this morning, as I mentioned to you earlier, a gentleman that's been on my program before. You have probably seen and heard him on other major network casts like Fox and NBC, ABC. He's been all over talking about the dangers of Islam here in this country. And I'll guarantee you he's written a book, many books, but the latest Twilight in America that really opened my eyes as to the enemy is here and we're not doing a thing about it. We're going to have him on the air at 1030 this morning. So I hope you're having a good day. The weather forecast does not sound conducive that you want to go to the beach, but uh, hopefully this weather will clear up a little bit by next week and we can have a better forecast. Enjoy your day. Zebit the Ranch, we're going to turn it over to Wheels. He's going to have CBS News coming up next. Oh, here we go. My goodness sakes. Good morning, good morning to you on a Thursday morning, April the 6th. Zeb at the Ranch. And, of course, we're brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, and some of our great advertisers like Western Way Services. From the canyons of the Snake River. They truly are always at your disposal, and I guarantee you that you can save time by giving them a call, and they'll deliver a dumpster to your location, your home, your business, whatever, and you fill it up. You can keep it as long as you need to, and then they'll come and get it, and it's gone. All your garbage problems are solved. Just give them a call today. Wonderful, wonderful people that are always at your disposal 734-6969 the number to call western way services you call them today loyal to the community and people they serve western waste services you know also i want to remind you too that the 45th annual salmon select horse and mule sale is going on up in salmon idaho right now as we speak i mean man they've got all kinds of activities going on up there in salmon and uh tonight they're going to have various activities kind of warm up the crowd a little bit and get everybody excited tomorrow at 6 p.m. the 17th annual salmon select mule sale then on Saturday at 1 p.m. the great big 45th annual salmon select horse sale Woohoo! don't miss it it's a good one up in salmon at the Lemhi County Fairgrounds 45th annual salmon select horse and mule sale and you know what talking about horses uh, and animals I want you to remember the Ark Animal Hospital Hospital, folks, at 750 21st Street in Hayburn. Oh, yes, warm hearts for cold noses. In Hayburn, 678-1177. Dr. Bill, Dr. Liz, the whole crew serving you and your animals. A mixed animal practice, meaning big or small. They love them all, and they do a great job keeping them healthy. Remember the number, 678-1177. Ark Animal Hospital in Hayburn. Yep warm hearts for cold noses well i don't know if she's got a cold nose or not but let's just hope everything is okay good morning kyle over at the chamber of commerce good morning zeb i'm checking my nose right now i think we're pretty warm how are you doing this morning absolutely fantastic how are you I'm good. I'm good. I'm missing the sunshine that we had yesterday. It was beautiful out. So, you know, I'm ready for spring and nice weather and just green grass. Well, I can imagine, but you know what? You've got something else going on next Thursday that's going to take a lot of your time because it's it the big... Is. It's already there. So, yes, we are coming in close to the Southern Idaho Women's Expo 2017 Doors will open a week from today, 9 a.m., so you, everybody will be walking in right now at this time, which will be fun because I'll be over there, and so I can talk to you from there, so we'll have a lot of fun with that. 
And uh, it's from 9 to 4. Tickets right now are $20. That includes lunch. It includes all the speakers. We have 50-plus booths that are going to be there with all kinds of things for you to check out. And we're just really, really excited. So if you want your tickets and want to get a discount, you definitely want to give us a call at 679-4793 today or Friday because then at the door the tickets are going to be $30 per person. So okay. So yourself some money. And give us a call, and we're just real excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, you know, along with all the uh, different booth spaces and uh, businesses that are going to be represented there, tell us a little bit about some of the featured uh, speakers that you've got coming in. Well, in the morning, about 10 o'clock, we will have Drs. North and Higgins from Casia Family Medical Center um, over at Casia Regional Hospital. And they will talk specifically. They have just a wonderful wonderful way about talking about different women's health issues. You can ask questions. They are a lot of fun. We're also going to have some healthy snacks provided by the nutritionist there, and I'm told that they are decadent. They don't look like, <laughs> you know, a healthy snack your mom would give you where you're like, thanks for the peanut butter and celery, Mom. These things are going to be really, really fun to eat and give you some new ideas. And then at noon, our keynote speaker will be Idaho Supreme Court Justice Robin Brody. We are very excited to hear from her talking about the glass ceiling and other things, you know, in terms of her uh, job and also just the area and working and then lastly, we'll have comedian Susan Rice. And some of you may say, that name sounds familiar. Susan is from the Portland area, but she has performed at several of the larger manufacturing plants in our area as the Christmas time entertainment. And we just hear she's awesome. So this is going to be a ton of fun. And then, of course, just like I said, all the different booths. There is everything and anything from women's services or just business services, different retail products all kinds of fun stuff um, to come and check out. And as we've talked before, we know that in terms of the data that we get, that women make up 70 to 80% of all the types of purchases and, and uh, you know financial decisions out there of whether you're going to pull the trigger to get something or not. So we're just excited. A lot of businesses are going to get a great opportunity to market to women and the people making the decisions. Absolutely. Now, along with this uh, Southern Idaho Women's Expo, I know that there's other things that are looming on the horizon. Anything else you want to mention quickly? Well, we uh, let's see. I'm going to just mention some of the great things that are happening this weekend over here in Minidoka and Kaja Counties. Folks, the Minicaja Shelter Yard Sale is going to be taking place Friday and Saturday. They're over there on First Street in Rupert. And all the proceeds from the yard sale do go to the Minicaja Shelter, which is a pretty worthy cause right here in our area. On Friday, the spring concert is happening for the Magic Philharmonic Orchestra. That's at 7.30 p.m. at the King Fine Arts Center. And to get tickets, you really need to contact the King Fine Arts Center for that information. Um, it's going to be just a fantastic concert. And then on the same night, John McEwen will be in concert over at the Historic Wilson Theater. So for tickets, you can contact them. And then, um, you know, there's some other things coming up on the horizon. Seriously, Southern, uh, you know, CSI and Minicaja Center, they have got tons of classes. We have lots of different people offering private classes and all sorts of things from painting and um, social media. And, I mean, I could go on and on and on. But really, if you get on our events calendar, you can look at April and kind of check everything out for yourself. Oh, my. Well, did your mom really, really give you celery with peanut butter? She did. Didn't everybody's mom, like, you come home from school and you're all excited to get the cookies or the cupcakes and it's just the celery with the peanut butter. I know. And, you know, I'm making <laughs> fun of that. Celery with peanut butter, mind you. I don't want to be discriminatory here and get the celery and peanut butter folks mad at me. But mm. Or carrots and ranch, you know. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Really, what you said, and it really drove home to me exactly the same thing. I'd come home from high school, and, and I'd bust in the back door. It might have been after practice or something, and I it was long before supper. And I'd look for a snack, and there would be, like, celery with peanut butter or, even worse, those little mini carrots. And I, I just, that took the whole fun out of being a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It 
does, but they're going to have some great ideas at the Women's Expo in terms of ways to have healthy snacks, but they're filling, and you feel like, yes, I've had a snack. I can make it for another hour <laughs> until yeah. my next meal and not feel like a rabbit, I think, Zeb. That's oh. really the point of the whole thing. <laughs> hey, we'll talk to you next week. Are you going to be available to get on the phone with us next week during the start of the expo? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. We're going to have a lot of fun with that, so okay. we'll be sure to call in and be talking to you live from the expo. I tell you what, um, I'll even give a little extra time on that next week. If you want to grab some people and get them on the air with you, we'll take about oh, maybe yeah. four or five minutes extra. How's that? Yeah, we can have a lot of fun with this and torment some folks. I'm excited, Zeb. Thank you. So All right, Kyla over at the <laughs> Chamber of Commerce. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, Deb. You too. All right. Thank you. Minicasha Chamber of Commerce, Kyla on the air, and the big Southern Idaho Women's Expo next Thursday at the Burley Best Western Inn. Oh, we got to pay some bills. And by the way, I want to remind you, too, on Monday, we're going to have, uh, we started Gardening for Idiots again. It was named after me. I know Miss Vicky at Vicky's Country Garden. She knows everything about gardening. And she's celebrating 20 years in business. My goodness sakes. And they've got everything for all your flowers and all your planting and all your gardening needs and all your decorative rock and bark. And they're, oh my, it's all there at Vicky's Country Garden, 185 South, 600 West of Paul, 4385. And listen Mondays at 9.15 for Vicky's Country Garden. We're going to have our next guest with us on the air in just a moment, but I also want to remind you about our dear friend Joel Heward over at Hanson Mortuary with his staff and his family serving you. 710 6th Street in Rupert. And they are the nicest people and the most cordial and caring and always treating every family underneath very, very serious circumstances when there's the passing of a loved one with the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity. Please remember Hanson Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert 436-5636. And, oh, by the way, too, we had Kate Roggy on the phone yesterday, and I want to remind you that they're going to have a great big spring community sale at the Minidoka County Fairgrounds this Saturday, April 8th at 10 a.m., <clears throat> and they're going to take consignments right up to the time of the sale. And I urge you, I urge you to get your consignments in and call Ron Roggy at 431-6187 or Kate Roggy at 431-0074. Roggy Auctions presents the big spring community quality sale at the Minidoka County Fairgrounds this Saturday, April 8th at 10 a.m. There is a dear friend waiting on the phone line right now, and I have no idea. Uh, I guess he's doing very well because he even hired Kyla from the Chamber of Commerce to answer his telephone for him. Good morning, Representative Bert Stevenson. How are you? Hey, I'm fine, Deb. I, I apologize to you for doing that to you. Uh, we were in the board meeting here, and, and uh, she sits next to me, and I, uh, when I saw it was your phone call, I just handed it to her. She didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> I apologize. (laughs) No, no, no. Hey, Bert, I've only got a limited time here this morning, but I wanted to get you on the air. I know that you are still very diligently working for the governor on the water board for the state of Idaho. We've seen tremendous amounts of moisture, snow and rain. What's the status right now going into this irrigation season? Well, Zeb, uh, right now, uh, as as of uh, Monday... It looks like in the uh, Palisades drainage up there that we had enough snow pack up there to fill that three times. Uh, we we have cut back a little bit on the recharge in uh, the Miller Gunning Canal. Uh, they're getting uh, they've got a couple of projects that they got to finish before the irrigation season season goes. Uh, if the farmers aren't using the water when they get the, their system ready, then they'll uh, recharge again until the farmers are ready for water. And we are recharging up at the Shoshone site, but that's water that's coming from the uh, uh, Wood River. Uh, uh, I was up north of uh, Shoshone on Monday, and Deb, I've never seen the amount of water that was running there 
in the Wood River up north of uh, Shoshone there. Wow. Uh, normally that that's totally dry, but but it had all kinds of water running through there. Uh, in fact, that's where the Gettings problems are coming from. Is that there? And and we just uh, we hopefully I'm, I've got a tour up in uh, Eastern Idaho, the Richard sites uh, Monday and Tuesday, and so hopefully uh, we'll get an idea of how much they're recharging up there. The canals uh, they had snow a little longer, but they they've got water coming there. But- I can't tell you what the bureau is going to do with Palisades right now. They're still draining it. Uh, but but they sh- seem to think that uh, it'll fill easily with what they've got. Uh, you and I both know that, uh, that it, it appears that they they know what they're doing. Okay. Yeah, that's the best I can say on that. Bert, let me ask you this question you know, in regards to the water and the amount of water. Now, knowing what we need to have a good irrigation season, are we going to be under uh, the principles that all this water is stored? Are we going to be able to go through this season and still have some holdover for next year because nobody knows what kind of moisture we're going to have this next winter and uh, going into 2018? Jeff, uh, we normally like to have the Upper Snake uh, Reservoir System about uh, between 45 and 50 percent uh, full at the end of the irrigation season. That being said, uh, we don't have any idea what kind of a summer or fall we're going to have as far as uh, uh, moisture. Uh, last year, we thought we were going to run the reservoirs all dry, and and then we got some rain there in uh, September and October, and that uh, we carried over quite a lot of water. In fact, that's one of the reasons we're having to dump water now is because we carried that much over. But they have a the Corps of Engineers has a a flood curve, what they call the flood curve, that uh, determines what the snowpack and and the moisture content of the snowpack. And, and how much that'll do. But it appears that we will be all right for two years here. Okay. That's the way it's up. Now, well, it isn't just here. You go over into uh, eastern Oregon, uh, reservoirs that have been dry there are now uh, uh, filling up, uh, some of them even spilling water, so... Bert, what about uh, with an abundance of water, thank the good Lord above, and possibly having enough for two years, but then it always seems like the government wants to take away from those that have and give to those that need. What about more demands on our water for other, what I'll call ludicrous situations, more fish water, more water possibly being diverted down south to L.A., Las Vegas, or whatever? What about more demands? on our water supply. Uh, well, Zeb, uh, you've been reading some of the same articles I have. I always worry when they use the ESA as the justification for uh, more uh, water to go down to Columbia for fish, uh, to, to move the fish out the ocean. And and because once they bring that ESA in there, then then we lose a lot of the control that we justify. Uh, what we send down there now is, to me, and, and a lot of the biologists uh, question how much good it does. There's other ways to do it. Right. But uh, I noticed that they had another story about the salmon in the paper this morning, about the little air bubbles that are supposedly killing the salmon, and, uh, you know, water, 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 more takeaways from our irrigation and our agricultural uh, society. But you look for, right now, a good year for irrigation for the entirety of southern Idaho. Zeb, uh, we, I, I'm really confident that we are going to have a good year this year as far as water is concerned. Uh, here again, uh, within the next uh, 10 days, the uh, irrigation districts will be starting to fill their uh, canal systems, and, and so that'll there won't be quite as much water maybe going over uh, Shoshone Falls or Colton Lynn. Uh, it, it's just 
amazing how last fall we were concerned uh, as long in uh, November and December that maybe our reservoirs wouldn't fill and now uh, we're spilling water uh, trying to make room so we don't flood out somebody. Well, I just want to say to you and your lovely wife and how much I appreciate your friendship. I know it was a spur of the moment report this morning about our water, but I'm glad I caught you. And Bert, thank you. By the way, uh, quick question. How are things on the north side with all the flooding about three, four, five weeks ago? Are people finally starting to get their lives and their property back in order again? Uh, Zeb, uh, remarkably well. There's still a few uh, fields out along Highway 24 between uh, uh, Kamima and, and uh, Dietrich that uh, got probably a, a couple hundred acres still covered in water. That may be, that's the old uh, Center Lake uh, bottom, and, and there may that may not uh, dry out till... Uh, June or July. Okay. And, and, and the farmers that have that, uh, it's a tough deal for them. Absolutely. Our thoughts and prayers go out to them. Bert Stevenson, former representative and still on the State Water Board, doing a wonderful job. Thank you so much for being on the program this morning. Uh, blessings to you and Elaine. Thank you, Bert. Zeb, I'll try and be better prepared next time. <laughs> and, uh, I do appreciate you, Zeb, and, and all you do for our community here. Well, thank Thanks. you. Thank you, Bert. God bless you. Thank you so much. That man is just absolutely uh, not only a dear friend, but a dear friend of the state of Idaho. And I know many share my feelings that uh, there there won't be another one like him, man. I tell you what, he's he's something special. Thank you very much. Oh, we got to pay some bills here real quick. Let's not forget our friends at Let's Ride, where the fun is sold. 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World. World, and they're open Monday through Friday, 9 to 6, Saturdays 9 to 4. Have you got an ATV? Oh, you do? Oh, well, then okay. You need to get it serviced before you head for the hills? Well, take it in there, get it serviced, and be ready. But you said you didn't have an ATV or a side-by-side or a dirt bike. Well, what are you waiting for? Get in there and look at that showroom. Holy moly, cram full of the best right there. And your selection is waiting for you at Let's Ride. Have some fun, and they've got a great accessory department, too. Let's Ride, 270 Highway 24, between Rupert and the World, where the fun is sold. Also, over there in that area... Just a little bit up the road, Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. Life insurance, health insurance, retirement planning, employee benefits, and so much more. They are really dedicated and responsive to your needs. Now, I tell you what, all you have to do is call them and make an appointment, and you'll find out how devoted they are to serving you. The number to call, 436-4424. <clears throat> Excuse me, 436-4424, Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. Really, really good people. You know, later on this morning, we're going to have Cash County School Days, and we're going to have our business salute, and then at 10.30 this morning, don't forget, we're going to have Martin Moyer, the uh, gentleman that wrote the book on Twilight in America about the Islamic terror camps here in the United States, and I don't want you to miss that. It's going to be absolutely excellent. By the way, too, while we have just a moment here, I want to say thank you. Uh, We had Cade Rogge on the phone the other day and talking about the great big sale that is coming up this Saturday right there at the Minidoka County Fairgrounds. And that, of course, is going to start at, let me get my notes here, I think it starts at 10 o'clock, and you don't want to miss a minute of it. That's right, 10 a.m. at the Minidoka County Fairgrounds, the spring community sale this Saturday. Now, if you still want to consign a quality item for the sale, you contact Ron Rogge at 431-6187 or Cade Rogge at 431-0074. They can and they will help you, along with Jade South and the crew of Rogge Auction 
<laughs> Wait a minute, everything fell over here. Roggy Auctions presenting the Big Spring Community Sale at the Minidoka County Fairgrounds at 10 a.m. Saturday morning. <laughs> Don't you miss it. I apologize for that dead spot, but everything just tipped over on my desk for a minute. And I thought the water, I have a glass of water here. And I really thought that that glass of water was going to go into the keyboard of my computer. And so I had a look of horror on my face for a moment. I apologize. Everything is okay. Only a little mess. Nothing to worry about. We're not drowning or anything, so take care. And also, we want to say thank you to Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center at 924 Christian Way in Rupert. Number to call, number to remember, 436-3200. And they make every effort to make Autumn Haven the best place for your loved one. That's right. Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center, 924 Christian Way in Rupert. And you know what? It's the only locally owned and operated assisted living facility in the Minicash area. And they do so much over there. And they, they invite the public to come by and visit their facility anytime. You know, Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center, they're small compared to some, but with a bigger heart than most. Right now, let's go to the phone line as I dab up some water here that uh, could have been a big, big wreck. And we say good morning to the lovely Rita Ramsey. How are you? I'm real good. Thank you. Where were you? You know what? Your desk, and I, I certainly don't mean to embarrass you, but your desk at your office resembles my radio desk. I mean, it's kind of like piles and piles and piles and piles. And if something tips over, we're in trouble. <laughs> I bet mine is worse than you, and I did have that moment when I tipped something over near my keyboard, and I went into panic mode. Yeah, I tell you what, this desk, I know where everything is, and I know you know where everything is. But if somebody else comes in, like to my studio, uh, they they go, how in the world can you call yourself organized? But, you know, it's my own little secret of knowing where everything should be. But when something happens like a tipped-over water glass, it's totally mayhem well my computer board is pretty well clear but all of my other stuff is where i know where it is and if i were to refile it or put away or clean my desk i would never be able to find it again because it's been in those places for so long and i know where to get stuff and i know where stuff is and that's just the way it is it comes with the territory are you a keeper in other words do you have papers on your desk and i'm guilty of this rita that my wife gets madder than dickens at me because i don't throw anything away because i'll see a story or something that might be four or five years old and i'll say well i might need reference to that in the future and that's where a lot of these piles of paper come from Oh, yes, I save everything, because I know I'm going to need it someday. And there's very few things that I throw away. I'll, I'll throw away things oh, with hesitance, and you know, but, but most of the time it's kind of like I should keep this for a while, and I do. And then later on, you know, way later on, I'll kind of get rid of stuff. But I, I'm just a believer in having to keep stuff, and, and over time it has proven that because I kept it, it was a good idea. There you go. That's me. You and I are a lot alike. Hey, listen, I want to get into the politics of what's going on right now. And this story is one for me that's really hard to swallow, especially when I saw the pictures of the dying children and the adults that had been gassed and those that had been torn apart by what they call barrel bombs. This Bashar Assad over in Syria is nothing more than a Idi Amin lookalike. And he is killing his people in the most dastardly ways. And Obama did nothing in his term in office when Assad went over the red line that was drawn supposedly in the sand about using chemical weapons. Obama said something would be done. Nothing was done. Now, what do we do? Well, it's a really tough thing because if you go in and do something, you've got the Russians that will team up with them, and they are. They're teamed together, and so do you start a, do you start a war? Um, all I can say is it's going to take some maneuvering to make it stop, and the, the bad 
price, you know, the bad price about the whole thing is, is that no matter what happens, the people are the losers. But I don't, I just don't have a clue. I've heard different uh, commentaries and different people. You know, what do you, what do you do? How do you, how do you take care of it? Uh, I heard a. Um, a military guy uh, go in this morning or talking this morning earlier, and he he was a he was actually a colonel, and he said, you know what you need to do is like uh, Ronald Reagan did, and that is he went in and he said, no, you're not going to do it, and it was the Libya thing, and uh, all of a sudden everything quit because you go in and say, no, you're not going to do it anymore, or else, and. And he actually quit and kind of went into hiding, you know, Gaddafi did for quite a, quite a time. Yeah. They have teamed up with the Russians, and that makes it a totally different thing. But you have to show that you're strong, because if not, like Obama with the red line, that's why we're where we're at, is because they just figured, oh, well, it doesn't really matter. We can do whatever we want to do, and those Americans are weak, and now they're just trying to see if we'll start something over there and i'm not so sure that putin isn't behind it well i i've thought a lot about this over the last couple of days and i think the key to that situation is trying to work with russia and trying to convince russia that if they don't try to quell the problem that is with uh, assad and syria that we will have more of the confliction of what's going on with their economy we will have more of the cutbacks to the russian uh, government more on the sales and more on the economy to russia i think that we can do it in negotiating fashion and i hate to say this but i think you'll agree with me the art of the deal in convincing Russia it would be in their best economic interest to get rid of Basad and try to establish some sort of peace in that region of the world. Well, I think that's true, but, uh, you know, there is some speculation that it's not just Syria that's really behind it. It's kind of like uh, Putin is, yeah. you know, has made puppets out of him, and, and this is his way to get things going. So it would be best if you could... Uh, you know, deal with somebody like Putin, but I don't trust him as far as I could yeah. throw a glance. Yeah, I agree. You know, I want to ask you this, and this story is getting bigger, and it's growing like a cancer over the last couple of weeks, and it's just taking leaps and bounds right now. You know where I'm headed. Susan Rice. I mean, this woman, this woman as a national security advisor to Obama, lied many, many, many times, lied about what happened in Benghazi, and now she's back in the same chair of lying all about what happened with surveillance of the Trump campaign. I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Well, that, that's exactly right. She just kept pushing the narrative of the video caused the Benghazi attack. She lied then and she lied now. Um, I did read an article that said that, you know, Susan Rice didn't really leak it, but she put the information out there because she knew other people would, and, and she was behind it and kind of pushing it, and... Uh, yet she wanted to keep her hands clean but the, the thing that's that's bad about the whole deal is you have got to have some investigations going and the part that worries me the worst is that i don't think that the republicans in congress or the senate have the wherewithal to say you know what we're going to do a an investigation and we're going to have heads roll and we are going to put those behind bars that are, are, you know, part of this. The thing of it is, you would have thought that they would have been able to do something, you know, with the Lois Lerner thing and the, um, the Fast and Furious and, and many other different things, and nothing ever happened. So I don't know why we would think that anything would happen now. I just doubt it will. And it, there's so much national security at stake here that it's just going to continue to get worse and worse and worse, I fear. You know, and the whole bottom line of this is that um, the Democrats, as a party, uh, 
are absolutely not going to work for what they're supposed to do, and that's work for the American people in Congress, uh, whether it's the House or the Senate. They're absolutely hell-bent on condemning and trying to figure out some way to get an impeachment procedure against Donald Trump and curtail his uh, activities as president. And all the while, you, me, and the American people are suffering, whether it's with Obamacare, whether it's on the economy, whether it's on national security, whether it's on ISIS, the list goes on and on. They're supposed to be working to make things better, but they're only nitpicking over something there's no evidence of. Well, that's just it. You know, you can fiddle around with your with your right hand, and meanwhile the left hand's doing all kinds of stuff behind your back that you're not paying attention to because the other hand is out there in motion doing these things. And it, it's the same thing. I can't in my wildest dreams understand why they would um, go ahead and let um, the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, uh, Devin Nunes, uh, step aside. Yeah. Yeah. This is ridiculous. Yeah. They should let him go ahead with it and when he has some if they have any kind of information that shows that he you know, he was in, in the wrong or, or a conflict of interest or something like that, that's a whole different story. And um I know that they have said that they'll have uh, uh somebody go in there and take uh you know, start doing investigations as Mike Conway of Texas and then of course uh, Trey Gowdy but and I thought that Trey Gowdy was a real um, a real yard dog and would really go after some of these things, but it just nothing has ever come to fruition, and so it just makes you wonder if he's just barking a lot and and they're not really getting down to facts. But this deal with Nunes, you know, there the Democrats' big deal was well, he went to the White House and took that information in there to Trump. Well, first of all, all the information is at the White House; it cannot leave the White House. And all he did was share it, and and there's not a reason in the world why he couldn't have shared it with with Trump. I mean, they this they're just making a big deal about nothing and spending all kinds of time about nothing, and uh, meanwhile they're doing all kinds of other stuff that we should be paying attention to, and and we're not. And that's the deal with Susan Wright and the uh, or Susan Rice and the uh, yeah. intelligence reports and stuff that have. Uh, been obtained illegally and and uh, been leaked to the press. But let let me ask you this, and and this is kind of uh, in the vein of uh, conspiracy theories, and you and I have delved into this before, but now when you look at the situation that's going on in this country right now, we are, and I dare somebody to tell me I'm wrong, falling apart at the seams when it comes to decency and rules and regulation and laws and the respect for laws and trying to find out exactly what the truth is or what the lies are and it almost makes me think that there is a much much higher secrecy of beings that financially are pulling the strings like puppets and they're saying nunas back off michael flynn you quit trump administration we're going to keep digging dirt it just seems like there's another source of power that seems to be making us go lower and lower would you agree with that well, I think that there really is, and, and we can point fingers and speculate. The big thing is is that when you have a president like Trump who is supposed to be in charge, he knows how to take charge. He's proven that over his, his lifetime of being a businessman. He's not taking charge in the White House right now. He's letting all of this other stuff just get out of control, and I think a lot of it has to do with the people that he surrounded himself with. He has surrounded himself with many very far-left Democrats, and he's letting them have power that probably shouldn't be abdicated over to them. But but the other thing is, is he, he needs to hold everything together and say, you know what, we're going to hold stuff together for a while, and we're going to get past these because they see with one thing after the other, and it started with Flynn, and now it's with Steve Bannon, and there's a number of others that are going to be going down, and he hasn't even been in office for 90 days yet. Yeah, yeah. Caller, we have a uh, we have a caller on the air, I should say, with a question. Quickly, caller, before I do the weather forecast, you're on the air. Uh, Zeb, I think we all have to remember about all this junk and crap that's going on. 
Hillary was supposed to win, and she didn't. Had she won, all of this stuff would be sugar and cream. I agree. Thank you. I agree. I appreciate you. And I agree with that statement. I really, really do. Uh, I'd like you to respond to it also, Rita. Go ahead. Well, that's and that's the gist of it all, is that Hillary was supposed to win, and they figured even until almost 10 o'clock that night on Election Day that she would win. And when they didn't, <clears throat> they're still in charge. And that's the big problem, is that they are still in charge, and they are doing everything that they can to try to take this administration down. And I think that if Trump would be a little bit more firm and would have surrounded himself with some of these less left people, maybe they could hold it together a little bit better. But they have got to stand firm and say, you know what, we're not going to make any changes now, and we'll sit down and sort things out, but we'll be darned if we're going to let them win by just thinking they can push out one person after the other. And the very first biggest problem was that he let Flynn go. He should have sat down in a meeting with no ears or microphones and said, okay, this is what we're going to do and we'll look at it, but we're not going to do anything for a few months because we don't want to look weak. We don't want them to think they've got the upper hand. Okay, now, I want to continue that vein of thought in just a moment. i got to get a weather forecast on here quickly, brought to you by Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company, CPAs, with the best of professional services to you in the Minicasha area for well over the last 50 years. Tax return preparation, tax planning, along with retirement planning, all of this and so much more with two locations to serve you in Burley and Rupert. Remember the name and remember they can can help you phillips oaks goodwin crane and company right now here's gina with the weather we are just in front of a storm front that happens to be moving in it's going to be warm today but the clouds are going to stick around and it's going to be a little bit breezy out of the southwest right around 13 miles an hour cloudy skies for today high of 67 tonight low 46 now tomorrow that's when the rain showers are going to kick in at least by the afternoon breezy as well out of the southwest right around 13 miles an hour 90 percent chance of rain showers high of 60 overnight low 40 those rain showers will be sticking around for saturday and winds are going to be picking up as well out of the southwest right around 20 miles an hour high of 50 overnight low of 32 for sunday Wind's still going to be there out of the west, right around 25 miles an hour, mostly sunny skies, high of 50 with an overnight low of 29. That is your weather for Zeb at the Ranch. And thank you, Gina. I appreciate it. Brought to you by the best, Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company. For all your financial help and assistance, tax return preparation, tax planning, financial statement preparation, retirement planning, and so much more, Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company in Burley and Rupert. Rita, the other day, when I had Senator Mike Crapo on the air, I voiced my complete displeasure with what's going on with the Republican Party. Not the Democrats, but the Republicans. And if you were listening, you heard me say to him that as a House member or a senator like he is, or the Oval Office, the Republicans won the election. Put on your big boy pants and get to work, and if the Democrats, as losers, complain, don't step around, step over them, because they are right now hired by the American people to lead with the uh, feelings that their party had the best ideas in the last election, so lead, and don't worry about the doggone Democrats and their crybaby attitude. Would you agree with that? Well, I absolute, absolutely do. The, the thing that's really bad is and most of the Senate, not most, a number of senators and Congress people are not happy that Trump's in the White House, and so they're doing everything they can to undermine it instead of getting into uh, the same ball court and saying, you know what, we're a team and we can make this thing work. There was a deal yesterday that Marco Rubio um, appeared partially to blame the appeasement of Trump uh, on the Syrian thing and the gas attacks. Oh, bro. And for him to come out and actually say <clears throat> that just makes me crazy because he's joined in with McCain and Lindsey Graham and some of those other goofballs that, <laughs> that are going to be trying to to blame you know Trump instead of just toning it down and saying we need to find out what we can do here. Instead, they're just having their own little press things, you know, like, 
well, he's, he's this bad guy, he's not doing the right thing, and, and I don't know whether it's just politically motivated because he wants to be another presidential uh, candidate to, in the next future or whether he just really means it and he's looking out for America. But I just, I just don't understand why they can't get together and say, you know what, I don't really agree with, with the fact that he's our president, but he is, and we better get on board. They're just, they're just so discombobulated, it's pathetic. They, oh. they show no leadership, and, and that's really sad. I want to play a little word game with you, a name game. And uh, tell me the first thing that comes into your mind when I mention these names, okay? We've done this before, and you did very well at it. Here we go. First name, and give me kind of your concept about the person. Elizabeth Warren. She is a disaster, and she is leading the way with trying to get Trump out of there, and she's trying to get women behind her. It's pathetic. Okay. And how about this one? Ivanka Trump. I'm going to stand reserved on that one because I feel like that she's really, really, um, I think she's really smart, but who she's married to and they're being Democrats, I don't know that I trust her choices. Okay, now the last name, because she just keeps putting her foot in her mouth all the time, Nancy Pelosi. She needs to retire and go home. <laughs> You know, why that woman, and honestly, I, I know I've been picked on for saying this. Uh, people have called and left messages of not-so-nice emails and addresses on my phone. But she is not the brightest star in the sky, and it makes me wonder, how in the world did she maintain her status in the Democratic Party? I, I, don't, I don't know. <clears throat> I do know that it's all political. And once you start up the ladder, nobody can take you down, and so they get people like that that are absolutely off the rails in charge and, and always in front of cameras, and it's just kind of like, seriously? Yeah. You know, I wanted to ask you one other thing, too. We're almost upon Easter, and I had a story the other day that really kind of bothered me, and some people said it's much ado about nothing, but that's not to me. It really is, excuse me, it's very serious. Cadbury eggs, and everybody's enjoyed, I think, a Cadbury egg, you know, the chocolate egg with the filling in the middle and everything. They have decided to cut back on their wrapping where it says Easter eggs and take off the word Easter. You know something that infuriates me, and I'm not going to buy any Cadbury eggs this year. What are your thoughts? I feel the same way. If they, if they they want to make the money off of it, but they don't want to be associated with it, then let them just choose. Do you want to be associated with it, or do you want to make the money? And if they don't want to make the money, then fine. I think we ought to just let them go ahead and, and do it. We've shown that we can make make people... Uh, companies responsible when we quit buying their products they all of a sudden come to attention real quick and and last i wanted to just ask you about the students of today we've talked about this subject in the past did you happen to catch that interview with various students at harvard university when they were asked who do they fear the most isis or donald trump and did you hear some of their absolutely stupid answers it just proves that they do not have a brain. They don't know how to think, and just because they're in college doesn't mean that they're smart. They obviously got to college because they got good grades in school, but I think that the the schooling process has, has dropped the standards so low that they don't even know what the word common sense means, so they don't even evaluate. Absolutely. Uh, real quick, anything going on in your world that you want to bring up? we got one minute left. Yes, a week from tonight, on the 13th, we're going to have our Tea Party meeting, and Russ Fulcher, who's a candidate for governor, is going to be in our meeting. He'll do a question and answer. So I'd like to invite um, everybody that wants to visit with him, find out who he is or what what his ideas about being governor are, to come. He did get 44% of the vote against Otter in this last one, and so he's a pretty big contender. All right. Rita, and uh, we found out that Rita's just like me. She's a keeper of all the things on her desk. I am, too. God bless you, Rita. Have a good day. Thanks. We'll see you next Thursday. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.
Uh, Rita Ramsey, I really enjoy her being on the program every Thursday. Hey, by the way, too, don't forget Ramsey Heating and Electric is offering rebates on qualified Lennox home comfort systems. Whether it's a gas furnace, an air conditioner, or a heat pump, you and your family will enjoy the comfort. Yes, you will. Call them at 678-0459 and learn how Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox can save you money. You know what time it is. It is time on a Thursday morning, if you're like me and you're starving to death, let's make some plans to go eat someplace for lunch. How about the AC drive-in at 601 East Main in Burley? Oh, my goodness sakes, the special for the month of April, shrimp and fries. Oh, my goodness sakes, they also have fish and chips and chicken fried steak sandwiches and famous Farmer Brown burgers, all of this and so much more at the AC Drive-In 601 East Main in Burley. Well, let's move on over to the Taco Bandito. Taco Bandito at 2301 Overland in Burley with the pork burritos with beans, pork, rice, sour cream, and cheese. It's fantabulous. And you got to try one of their breakfast burritos with bacon and sausage and scrambled eggs and cheese and onions. Oh, it's fantastic. Taco Bandito, 2301 Overland in Burley. Well, let's move over to Burgers Etc. 124 South Oneida in Rupert and 700 Overland in Burley. And don't forget they've got corn dogs and burritos only 99 cents after 3 o'clock. Are you kidding me? And don't forget, too, they've got shrimp baskets and halibut sandwiches and fish sandwiches, all of those for Lent. Oh, my goodness, great people, great food at Burgers Etc. in Burley and Rupert. And let's go to Steve. 290 South, 600 West of Hayburn. And they've got a brand new salad at Steve O's. A chicken breast salad with bacon and all the goodies. And they've got the buffalo burgers. And they've got a different soup every day. And cupcakes. Why, they've got cupcakes. I love cupcakes. And friendly, friendly people. They're open Monday to Saturday, 11 to 9. Steve O's in Hayburn. And last but not least in our tour of If You're Hungry and Starving to Death, let's go to Doc's Pizza. You know what? They're located at 514 6th Street in Rupert, right on the square. And they've got take and bake pizzas right now at Doc's Pizza. Take them home, bake them, sit there in your own living room. My goodness, delicious. And I'll tell you what, if you haven't tried their delicious pizza, all you got to do is just stop in and enjoy at Doc's Pizza. 514 6th Street in Rupert. And all of these great businesses say if you're hungry and starving to death, they can help. We're going to take a little break for a few minutes and have the news come in from CBS, and then we'll start over the next hour with the Cache County School Days report, business salute, and at 1030, Martin Moyer. Don't miss it. Zeb at the Ranch, I'll be right back. All right, here we go. Hour number three. Zeb at the Ranch, good morning to you and yours. Zeb at the Ranch brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you with a great big spring tire sale going on right now. And also some of our great advertisers like Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Get on the route service, 734-6969. Oh, my goodness sakes. Let's see. What have we got to do here? Uh, First and foremost, I want to remind you that next Thursday, the Southern Idaho Women's Expo is going to be at the Best Western Burley Inn on Thursday, April 13th, and the doors open at 9 a.m. Now, tickets are $20 in advance, and at the door are $30, so you better buy your tickets early. Go to the chamber office. Give them a call at 679-4793. That number Number again, 679-4793. And don't forget, they're going to have great speakers, all kinds of fun, and it's sponsored by the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce, Idaho Central Credit Union, and the Idaho Housing and Finance Southern Idaho Women's Expo next Thursday, April 13th at the Burley Best Western. Don't you miss it. 
You know, we got a lot of things going on, and we'd also like to acknowledge our dear friends. Hello, Jason Lee, how are you? You know, this business has been here for a long, long time, and they've just announced a new no-tax plan. You know what it is? A great big sale. Yep, and it's going to end on April 30th. What it is, it's a presidential promise you can count on. No money down, no interest for 12 months on approved credit, and oh my goodness, can you save money on window coverings and lift recliners and the entire assortment of all the different recliners they have there at Lee's and living room sets at Lee's furniture floors and more all of this and sale prices you better stop in and see them today today don't put it off please get in there everything on sale Lee's furniture floors and more 459 Overland in Burley you stop in and see those good folks today uh, let's see what else have I got here real quick that I need to get on the air before we go to Cache County School Days. I know what it is. I want to say a big thank you to those businesses that are saluting Easter. Thank you so much. The very, very important holiday of Easter Sunday looming around the corner, Palm Sunday this weekend. Well, Book Plaza with Colonel Dale at 222 West 11th Street in Burley. They've got all your precious moments, and they've got the books and all the little figurines and special gifts for all of your Easter baskets. And they've got a wonderful children's department, and they've got all the greeting cards. Please make a list and make it to stop in at the Book Plaza today at 222 West 11th Street in Burley. And also, Perkins Restaurant, 800 North Oberlin in Burley with the strawberry pie. Oh, it's delicious. Great bakery items like fruit and cream pies and cookies. You buy three muffins, get three free. And don't forget to have dinner, Easter dinner at Perkins Restaurant. And it's ham or turkey dinner with all the trimmings. Perkins Restaurant, 800 North Oberlin in Burley. And also thanks to the Goody Shop at 133 West Main Street in Burley. Oh, my goodness. Easter baskets. They can make a special one up for you and your family or any member of your family. Different baskets with all kinds of fruit and brownies and cookies. You name it, it's delicious. Always is from the Goody Shop. 133 West Main in Burley. 647 one Zero six. Right now, it's time for Cache County School Days, brought to you by two great businesses that we're very, very proud of. Ambulatory Surgery Center at 1344 Highland Avenue, Suite E in Burley. The number to call and save money on your outpatient surgeries, 677-8888. And A Child's World at 1308 Overland in Burley. My goodness, all the games, all the toys, all the books, all the clothes, everything, all the baby furniture right there at A Child's World world 1308 overland and burley and right now without further ado we go to the phone line and say good morning to jasa fillmore ag science teacher at kasha high school how are you jasa i'm doing well and calling in this morning from csi and twin falls our state ffa convention is this week you know i had the honor uh, this has been quite some time ago to speak at the state ffa banquet and uh, boy i mean some great great kids tell us about what the atmosphere and the attitude is right there at that state convention it's a sea of blue jackets so if any of your listeners happen to come over to twin falls this week you'll see uh, those high school kids in blue jackets everywhere. So it's a, it's a good sight to see. There's probably about um, 1,200 kids here from all over the state. Now, what are you hoping to accomplish with your students by being there? What's the message that you want your students to pick up? You know, when I was in 10th grade and I attended the state FFA convention for the first time, that's when I decided I wanted to be an ag teacher. So I hope if, if my students are here... Are, since my students are here, maybe they'll hear from somebody or meet somebody, make a connection that might inspire them in the same way to choose a future career path. You know, when you talk about these kids, uh, part of the FFA, and you know it's more than the blue jackets and the white shirts and the white blouses, and and it's more than just promoting agriculture. I have said for a long time, Jason, that these kids that are involved in FFA, they really have their heads on straight, and they know. They know what they want to do and how to be successful. I think so. I think the FFA affords these kids so many opportunities to travel and 
meet people in the industry. Just this morning, we sent out, um, oh, probably 15 busloads of kids all over the valley to take tours, uh, places like Stanley Hay or Chabani, um, all of these awesome agricultural businesses that we have in the area. So we're kind of even recruiting for the agriculture industry in our area, which is the most important industry we have down here in southern Idaho. You know, Jason, I know that you're a cheerleader, and I use that word, I am too, for agriculture. As a teacher, and in my business, I thank uh, agriculture for almost everything I've got. But what does the future bode for agriculture? Are you looking at better times ahead, or what's going on? I think so. From my perspective, you know, we see new ag companies popping up in this valley left and right. So, uh, and also, from my perspective at Chazza High School, not many of my students come from traditional agriculture backgrounds, but they're all future consumers. And so we have to educate these kids about um, the current issues in agriculture and not let them fall prey and be susceptible to the fear marketing game that a lot of these companies are playing. You know, they... They say that GMOs are terrible things and everybody needs to be gluten-free and if all of my kids are going to end up buying food at some point, but they have the knowledge to make wise choices and not, not fall prey to those false marketing claims, then that's you know, that's going to make it better for all of us as consumers. Jason, one of the things that bothers me, and I know that we're under limited time here this morning, and I wish I had more to talk with you, is that I'm very concerned about the not very knowledgeable and not very intelligent part of our society that would like to see all of animal agriculture stopped overnight. What are your thoughts on their very, uh, I think, dangerous attitudes? I don't think it's sustainable. You know, animal protein provides us with those essential amino acids that we can't get from plants. And it might sound good to someone that's uneducated, but that's my number one goal as an ag teacher, especially in a non-traditional setting at Kaja High School, is to give the kids the facts that they need to make wise choices. Because they're, a lot of our kids are already 18. They're already voters. You know, if we had some crazy referendum come across that would outlaw or limit the ability of ag producers to, to grow animals, then that could affect our state's economy. So we need to give the kids facts. And, of course, let them make their own decisions, but they shouldn't just be armed with false marketing. They should get the facts from ag teachers and other ag um, supporters in the industry. Well, now, what's going on? I understand, according to the note that Debbie Critchfield sent me, that you have remodeled an old district surplus unit into a functioning classroom. I have no idea what's going on here. Explain it to me. Yeah. So last summer, the uh, we needed more classroom space at our high school, and there was an old, um, I, I believe before it was a storage building, it was the field house out next to Budge Field in Burley. And it was just full of junk, uh, old broken scoreboards and desks and track equipment and stuff like that. And uh, so, you know, our principal showed it to all the staff members and said, so who wants to make this their classroom? You know, I kind of hung back. Like, I don't want to, you know, jump at it, but no one was raising their hand. So I said, you know, this would make a perfect ag building. And so we've completely transformed it. Um, they painted the walls for us. They laid carpet down on half of it. So it's really a, a cool ag building. And this spring, my students have been working their tails off. We um, got a new greenhouse finished, and so they're using shovels and digging out the floor of the greenhouse so we can add gravel. We have a garden. We're going to move our rabbit building over next to our new classroom. And it's going to be a really cool facility when it all gets done. What about your students at Kasha High School and the agricultural program? You mentioned something a few minutes ago that piqued my interest. You said a lot of them or most of them do not come from agricultural backgrounds. Is that correct? Yeah, most of my students are live in the city of Burley, and they they ha- are a couple generations removed from any type of ag production. So it's really kind of a an urban school in a rural area is how I like to think of it, but they have never raised animals. A lot of my students live in rental housing where they can't even have pets. Um, they don't grow their own food, and so to, to give them that basic knowledge of bringing them back to their roots of this is how we grow plants that can feed us, this is how we raise animals that can feed us, um, it's really eye-opening for them, and they love taking the ag classes, uh, and I like teaching it. 
Well, let me ask you this question, though. When when you get them in the classroom and they've never been exposed to this kind of a lifestyle, I mean, it must be a real culture shock for them to learn about growing plants and learn how to grow crops and learn how to take care of animals. And then you take them to the FFA convention and they might be talking to a young man that's involved in maybe a uh, 700 to 800 cow outfit, cow calf outfit, or maybe another person that farms a lot of sugar beets. They must just have their jaws drop when they really know what's going on yeah it takes them it takes them a minute to um especially if they're new to our school and they don't really know what our ag program is about like i'm not a farmer i don't want to take ag but they get out there and realize that i'm not putting them in a tractor seat although that would be cool that would be a good education and telling them to go you know and drive out in the field like a hick that's a lot of their perceptions but we talk about the technology i've brought in um people that can fly drones and talk about precision agriculture, which appeals to a lot of kids with computer skills. You know, a, a lot of my students, they're fun, free time, they like to play video games. So if they could, you know, sit behind a computer and design programs for these precision ag operations and drones, that's, it's just, it's mind-blowing to them, just like you said. Um, and I think as soon as they get over that initial perception of it, this is just for farm kids, they realize that agriculture is a lot, is a lot more than just putting stuff in the ground and, and raising animals. What about some of the success stories? I mean, how many years have you been a teacher, and how many years have you been at Cache High School? This is my eighth year teaching ag. I spent a couple years up in northern Idaho, and then two at Burley High School, and then had the opportunity to move to Cache High School three years ago. So we're just finishing up three years, and I would say um, right now with our new facility, just the fact that I have support from the district uh, and from the community, um, we had the whole rabbit thing last year with the city of Burley, but just to know that I have support from people to teach these city kids agriculture, that's the biggest success story for me. And taking kids to leadership conferences that have never been outside of Burley, that's hard to imagine, but I've taken kids even just here to Twin Falls, they've never been to Twin Falls. Do you? Uh, s- it really expands the horizons of these kids that, that a lot of people have written off, and yeah. their, even their families and parents, they might think, you know, you're just going to take a job at fast food and that's what you're going to do and so to show them that there's more out there is is a really big success story in my mind and that was the last thing i was going to ask you this morning are you seeing and learning and accepting the fact that some of these kids really have had it seep in and they want to stay in agriculture somewhat have you had students like that that absolutely are excited about making a career in agriculture yeah, especially some of the non-traditional jobs. You know, you tell them, like, okay, you want to be uh, an accountant or work at a bank. Well, in our area, you should go learn something about agricultural lending because the industry is huge in this area. So I think it's just shown them that if they can, they can take whatever career aspirations they have and give it an ag twist and have so much, so much, so many more opportunities for careers. Okay. Uh, also, that we do a lot of career tours, and I connect them with industry representatives from, from all over. And the fact that they don't have to go work at fast food um, after they graduate. They can go take an entry-level position at, like, McCain Foods, for example, and make $10, 11 $12 an hour starting out and have the potential to make 20 or $30 an hour as they move up and, and have all the benefits. So I have had oh, several students that have said, you know, I never thought about doing that, or I never thought I could... Um, carry an iPad around a food production facility and run all the equipment and so it's 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 awesome well now what about the ratio girls versus boys is it about 50 50 60 40 70 30 uh who dominates in your classroom in my classroom we our biggest demographic group is um hispanic males so most of our school is that so it's reflected that way in my classroom but statewide we have a lot more girls entering ag programs, I would say it's probably 50-50 at least, if not more girls than boys statewide. Okay. Um, and so it's been a flip-flop in the last generation, and especially our agriculture teachers. You know, 20 years ago, there was only a handful of female agriculture teachers, and now we're about 30-35% female agriculture teachers. So it's, it's on the rise, and I think it these non-traditional careers we've been talking about really open the door for a lot of girls to take the jump into ag and 
not just a boys game anymore. You know, you are an exceptionally gifted teacher, and I said the last time you were on my program, I couldn't wait for you to call in. I really enjoy you. Jason Fillmore, egg, uh, egg science teacher at Casha High School. God bless you, and have a wonderful time at the state FFA convention, and come back soon. Thanks, Zev. It was a pleasure. Uh, it's my pleasure. Thank you very, very much. What a nice lady right there and a great teacher. And you can just hear the enthusiasm in her voice. I really appreciate that. You know, it's time for our business salute. And uh, I'm going to go over to Wheels and ask him if we've got Don Scaro on the line. Wheels, did we catch him? He's not on the phone yet, but I am getting him. Uh, Deanne had just called me. Okay, you go ahead and call him quickly if you would, please. I'd appreciate that, all right? Uh, While you're waiting for Don Scarrow to get on the phone, I want to remind everybody, I just was handed this. It's a benefit dinner and auction. It's going to be April 13th at 6.30 p.m. at the Raft River High School gym. Uh, Dinner is by donation and an auction to follow at 7.30 for the proceeds going to the Whitaker family. Their house was severely damaged by the flooding up in Malda earlier this spring. And if you'd like to make a donation for the auction, or the family, please contact Lindsay Udy at 431-5514 or Julianne Loftmiller at 539-7303. That's coming up on April 13th. Uh, Wheels, did we get him? Uh, we do, sir. Uh, I will put him through, and uh, he'll be talking to you. All right, sir. Thank you very much. And right now I get a chance to talk to the man. I mean, this man knows all about meat, and he knows all about delicious meats. And this is Don Scarrow from Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome. They are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. Good morning, Don Scarrow. How are you? I'm doing great, Zeb. Yourself? I am not bad. My gully, I understand you got some new bacon. It's called Buckboard Bacon. Tell us a little bit about it over at Scarrow's. Uh, with Buckboard Bacon, what we're doing is taking the pork shoulder and forming it into just like a pork belly, treating it just like bacon, and we've got five awesome flavors out there the number one uh, flavor that the people are really loving is a ranch style bacon it's because we season it with actually ranch salad dressing Ooh. and the kids are going crazy over it well it sounds delicious now it, what's what's the specialty of this bacon is it kind of a more oh i don't know leaner and more economical or what's the deal here yeah it, it's leaner because it comes off the shoulder so it's a lot leaner bacon and it is almost half price. We're, we're, we're selling it on special right now for $3 a pound. Um, that, that'll last for about another month, and we'll raise it up probably to around $4 a pound. But it's, uh, it's much leaner. Uh, a lot of the ladies are really liking it because it doesn't have so much fat in it. It is a lot leaner bacon. You know, Don, quickly, tell us about that Scarrow's Meats tax return package on meats. What is that exactly? Explain it to us. Yeah, that is... Uh, 57 pounds of meat for $249. Uh, it's got a mixture of beef steaks, marinated uh, boneless, skinless chicken breasts. It's got bacon. It's got bratwurst. It's got breakfast sausage in there. Um, all three uh, items, beef, pork, and chicken, it's uh, extremely good value. I think it comes out to like $4.30-some cents a pound. It's a very good value for your money, and it, uh, all the items are really good. You know, I'm going to have to tell you that one of these days in the very near future, I'm going to be ordering one of those marinated prime ribs. I remember a couple of years ago you let me taste and sample some of that prime rib. It will knock their boots off delicious. You are fantastic. And this is the season where they're planning on family outings and picnics and uh, class reunions and everything. Boy, you've got everything right there at Scarrow's Meats. Yep, it's, it's actually not a, uh, we have a marinated prime rib, but the one that's super hot right now is the marinated tri-tip. That's the one I brought you over the flip, the taste of was oh. the marinated tri-tip. Uh-huh. It's your summer.
summertime barbecue item. Uh, the marinated prime ribs usually more of a holiday item. We we do can have them all the time, and uh, we'll make them up special for you, no problem. But the marinated tri tips, what you're thinking about, Zeb. And it is knock your socks off good. You know, Don, how long have you been doing this uh, with Scarrow's Meats? I mean, man, you're not the new kid on the block, but you've sure got some great new innovative ideas. Yeah, we're we're doing new stuff uh, all the time. Always, uh, I think if you're not moving, changing, doing something, you're going behind. So I'm always trying something new. I always I want to have something new every day. Well, I tell you what, it's delicious meat, and uh, if people are unaware as to where you're located or what your hours are, how do they go about finding you over there north of Jerome? The easiest way is we're right there on North Lincoln, three and one-third miles straight north of Jerome. Most of the people out there don't realize I have uh, almost 2,000 square foot retail store here, ready, everything ready to go, just walk in, go shopping, and uh, ready to take home. Okay. Straight north of Jerome, three and one third miles. Okay. Now, what about uh, your hours? How long are you open, and what days? It's Monday through Friday, eight to five. If you can't get there by five, just drop us a line, and uh, we never get out of here at five. We just kind of put a little guideline out there, and everybody says I run on Scarrow time, and we never get out of here at five o'clock. It's always closer to five thirty. So, but. it's typically the hours are 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. All right. And they can call you at 324-7657 or go to the website, learn more about Scarrow's Meats at scarrowsmeats.com. Is that right, Don? That is correct. Absolutely. Well, I just want to say how much we value you as an advertiser on our program and also for the delicious meats that you have over there at Scarrow's Meats. And it's true, you are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. Don Scarrow, God bless you, man. Thanks for being on the program this morning. Okay, thank you, Zeb. I appreciate you letting me on the program. All right, sir. Thank you so much. Really a good guy right there. Don Scarrow and uh, Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome. The number to call, 324-7657. Oh, boy, yeah. They are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. I uh, want to remind you, too, quickly about uh, Ramsey Heating and Electric offering rebates on qualified Linux home comfort systems. Whether it's a gas furnace, an air conditioner, or a heat pump, you and your family will enjoy the comfort. Call them at 678-0459 and learn how Ramsey Heating and Electric and Linux can save you money. Get a hold of them today. Right now, we're going to send it back over to our main studios for a break for about three or four minutes. And when we return, we're going to have Mr. Martin Moyer on our program with his book called Twilight in America. I think you're going to find it extremely interesting. You stay tuned. Wheels, take it away. And now, back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. I don't think that there is anything that I am more afraid of for my family, my neighborhood, my community, and my country than the encroachment of Islam into America. And this next gentleman I'm going to have on the program is absolutely so well versed as to what's happening in the United States with the Islamic terrorist training camps in America and a book that he had written regarding this subject called Twilight in America. And I'd like to introduce again and thank him for being on my program, Martin Moyer. Good morning, sir. How are you? Thank you, Zeb. It's great to be back. Well, you are a very interesting gentleman and a very knowledgeable gentleman and a person that I trust. I mean, I hear all the the uh, aggregate of people saying, oh, it's not that much to worry about, and why are we afraid of Islam? Oh, my goodness, you sound racist when you complain about them, etc. Uh, but I am concerned, Martin. I'm very scared, to be honest with you. Why is this country, America, so adopting, in your opinion? and accepting of Islam and its principles, why are we giving them basically a free pass to come in? Well, first of all, you're right. We should be scared. Um, You know, we spend all of our day looking at this particular issue of Islamic encroachment inside the United States. 
And I can't think of anything that worries us more than where it's popping up in all the school districts around the country. And we're just shocked at the level of unconstitutionality that these particular programs were actually engaged with a public high school child. But last month, we discovered that the Department of Education actually has its own Islamic, and I'm going to say, indoctrination program for the public schools, and it's called Access Islam. Now, this program is the most insane of any that we've ever witnessed. It's a 10-lesson plan for public school students, grades 5 through 12, and some of the questions that a student has to answer are, what does a Muslim prayer sound like? What are some of the things Muslims say when they pray? What does a Muslim prayer movement look like? And I'm looking at these questions, and I'm like, what is the correct answer, Zeb, for what does a Muslim prayer sound like? How does a teacher grade a student? What's the correct answer? Uh, so it's just shocking. And I want to say before we get uh, too far along here, uh, because I'm upset about this, and we fired off a letter of demand to the Department of Education asking them to remove this particular program, and we want people out there to join our campaign. So we do have a petition on our website called Dump Access Islam. And if people are outraged by this, I put them to go to our website and uh, sign our petition, and that's at ChristianAction.org. Back to you, Jeff. No, and I appreciate you bringing that up, sir, but, you know, I am absolutely incensed to think that Christian prayers and Christian activities or Jewish prayers and activities, they're pushed by the wayside in this country with the so-called uh, separation of church and state. How in the world could the Department of Education advocate and finance money for Access Islam is beyond me. Yeah, get this. So one of the worksheets that a student has to complete has scripture from both the Quran and the Hadith on it. Now a child has to read those verses and then they have to explain what those verses mean and then they have to give examples of how a Muslim uses those verses in their daily lives. And Zeb, can you imagine a public school teacher handing out uh, verses from the New Testament? and having students give a definition, an explanation of what those verses mean and how they're used in the daily life of a Christian. I think we both know the ACLU would break a leg falling up the courthouse steps trying to file a lawsuit. That's how quickly they'd be running to court. You know, when, when you wrote the book, uh, Twilight in America, Sir, and that was in 2012, I've got to ask you this. Do you wish now that you could quickly do a uh, an update on that book for all the information? Because I would imagine that so much has changed, so much information has become more dominant in the news and what you know about the Islamic influence in this country. Are you going to do a sequel to warn us all about how dangerous they've become. Yeah, you know, uh, we have thought about uh, updating our DVD called uh, Homegrown Jihad, uh, which people can find on our website, uh, with the new material that we have learned. We actually have uh, people on the inside of that uh, group that are our informers now, so they kind of keep us update, updated as to what their activities are. And I can tell you, when Donald Trump uh, became president, it threw a real scare in them. And uh, we were told that they had orders out to all of their members to arm themselves as quickly as possible, that uh, they were preparing for a raid from the Trump administration. They would fight to the last man is standing. And they were particularly concerned about uh, 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 General Kelly. Uh, but after he got fired, uh, they thought that was an act of Allah. And they are, are not quite as nervous that they're about to be uh, raided anymore. Uh, sir, do you see a severe naivete of the American public to where they've got their heads buried in the sand and a lot of the uh, politicians and a lot of the school teachers and, quite frankly, the general public are just so naive as to the danger that's lurking out there? Uh, I'm shocked that when some of these Islamic school programs become known to the the parents in the community, that the anger is basically directed at the parent who's upset over these Islamic programs rather than school officials that are teaching these programs. Here in Virginia, 
I know a, uh, a, a family who was outraged when their child brought home a homework assignment that had them write Allah is God in calligraphy. And they raised a storm about it to the public school. And they said they were shunned by other members of the community that going to the grocery store, that they were being, you know, uh, looked askance at and, and yelled at. Uh, I'm just shocked that so many parents out there have no qualm at all that this religion is being pushed on their child. So, you know, I, I'm still pulling myself off the floor over how Christian parents are accepting this type of program going into public schools. You know, sir, when you look at the overall picture of what's happened in this country since Donald Trump won the presidency, and you mentioned his name a few moments ago, do you have a sense of optimism that maybe good people, strong people, are going to be seeing the the absolute devilness of what could happen with Islam encroaching in our government, possibly with Sharia law, etc.? Are there enough good people left to fight this for our integrity of our nation? Yeah, I think so, and I do think that uh, I know some of the people that uh, Donald Trump has put as a part of his team, uh, they're excited about some of the people he's surrounding himself with. Uh, but, look, you know, uh, D.C. Is a, is a big machine, and it's hard to move, and nothing gets done overnight, and he's only been in office for a few months now. Uh, but I, I can see that in a couple of years from now, we're going to see some, I believe, some significant changes here. And that significant change is only going to happen, though, if uh, people in the community continue to voice their concerns and don't go back to the privacy of their home and back in front of their TV and hope that Donald Trump's going to carry the day all by himself. Uh, People should realize how much he is attacked, how viciously he is attacked, how horrible the news media approaches him. And without the outcry of public citizens staying with them through these next four years, and I, I think it is going to be a, a bigger challenge for Donald Trump than it has to be. Martin, with the news media and our education system that basically is extremely liberal, and I listened to some reporter on Harvard's campus ask students over the last couple of days if they were more afraid of ISIS or Donald Trump, and almost all of these students at Harvard said that they were more afraid of Donald Trump. Wow, what are we going to do to change and hopefully rectify our education system in this United States, or is it beyond hope? Well, you know, given the nature of what I do every day, and that is uh, fighting for our traditional principles and what founded America and made it great, it's hard for me to ever acknowledge that it's hopeless. Uh, And that would be a real challenge for me to admit that to myself. But there are days uh, that, as I'm sure that you have days, you wake up and you, you look out and you go, is this hopeless? Has America really just given up and... You know, it, there's a good degree of evidence that that has happened. But look, with the uh, presidency of Donald Trump, everybody would have said that, that was hopeless and did say it was hopeless, and a miracle happened. He did get elected. I see God's hand in it. I don't know if other people see it that way, but I certainly do. So I always have faith in the, in the mighty strength of our Lord and Savior that uh, he will come in and rescue us if, our, if the Christian community... You know, continues to stand firm and offer our prayers and remember what we're all here supposed to do. And that is, you know, be, you know, God's example here on earth and welcome in his kingdom. Martin, do you think our politicians and our leadership of this country, are they really aware or are they educated or in tune to the fact that these terrorist groups, ISIS, etc., are here? They're here in the United States with these training camps. And when you talk to people or you do a seminar or you speak to some groups, are people still shocked and so naive that they don't understand this, including our politicians? What's the atmosphere there? Our politicians are willfully ignorant on these terrorist operations inside the United States. And I can explain that. Uh, uh, look, if you're running for office and someone you're in a community that votes for you says, uh, Congressman, Senator, what are you going to do about these terrorist camps in the United States? Uh, you better do something if you admit they're there, or you just look the guy back in the face and say, I don't know what you're talking about. These are peaceful Muslims. Uh, all they want to do is have a little habitat of their own where they can 
you know, operate in their community with their own little Sharia law, and this is really nothing to worry about. And so many politicians, so many policemen, so many sheriffs around the country decide to take that point of view because otherwise they actually have to do something, and politicians don't really want to have to do anything. When you look at the situation now with the uh, refugees coming in from Syria and the vetting process cannot be at all 100% safe for us, the citizens of the United States, what are your thoughts about the Syrian refugees and refugees in general being spotted around various areas of the United States? Is this a concern for you like it is? I'm very worried about it. Well, you know, we did a film called Europe's Last Stand, America's Final Warning. It took us four years to make, where we went to Europe and we exposed the problem that Europe is having with uh, unfettered immigration coming into the country. And people can look at Europe as a model as to what's going to happen in the United States if we continue to follow that path. Unfortunately, Zeb, we are following that path. We're allowing them to, to come in. And when they come in, they will not assimilate. And as they are only assimilating with themselves, uh, they will continue to uh, become a very serious problem for the United States uh, because that's what they are here to do. It's to turn communities and turn our nation into an Islamic state. That is their goal. And if people don't understand that that is their goal, uh, then, you know, I guess we're going to deserve what we get. Um, but they're not sitting home watching TV. They're not sitting home playing Nintendo games. Uh, they're not off to the movies. Uh, they're not off uh, to sporting events. The, the uh, typical Muslim that comes into the country that has a diehard jihadist attitude is there for one purpose, and that is to conquer us. You know, Martin, when you look at the situation politically that's going on today with uh, Bashar in, or pardon me, Bashar Assad over in Syria, killing and maiming his own people with chemical weapons, etc., and of course that's in the hub of the Middle East with the hot spot for what might be Armageddon in the future. What are your thoughts? Is there a way to put this fire out, or is it going to become bigger and bigger? No, it'll come uh, become bigger and bigger. There is no uh, simple flip a switch and solve that situation uh, in Syria. Um, you've got Assad on, on one hand who uh, is, is a tyrant, and you've got a lot of radical Islamists who are tyrants on the other end trying to take over the country. And if you're in between, your question is, is which tyrant do you like better? Uh, but look, if uh, Assad loses the war, uh, then it's just going to be taken over by very radical uh, fundamentalist jihadist uh, Muslims, and uh, it, it doesn't look good, doesn't bode well, I don't see any solution for it, then they're just going to kill themselves, and we're going to uh, pick up the beast and see what's left, and we're probably not going to be happy with what we see. You know, are you writing another book, or what is your major project now with the Christian Action Network? What is Mr. Moyer going to turn out for the public to uh, enjoy in the future? Well, we have just produced a new documentary uh, called Islam in the Schools, which not only covers this, this Department of Education issue, but we report on all the other type of Islamic curriculum that will shock parents that's going on in schools around the country. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to continue to update that documentary uh, as we have funds coming in. But for right now, it's pretty good. It lasts about uh, 15 minutes and uh, maybe a little longer, maybe 20 minutes now. Uh, but parents are going to be shocked. They need to know this, that because uh, it's not like the public school teacher is going to tell the child to go home and show the homework and classroom assignments to the child. Parents have got to be on the lookout for it. And this DVD gives parents uh, an idea of what to be looking out for with their child in the public school. You know, I am so excited and very thankful to have you on this program, and I highly recommend to my audience to read that book, Twilight in America, written by Martin Moyer, and he is also the founder of the Christian Action Network. Sir, I thank you for your time this morning, and please, God's blessings, and keep up the good work. Deb, I look forward to being back on the show with you. Thank you very much. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, very nice gentleman and very knowledgeable about what's going on with the problems of Islam in America today and his book, Twilight in America. <clears throat> Excuse me for the sore throat. 
But it's that time of the year when the trees bud out and everything. It's a little bit of hay fever season, so I apologize. But I heartily recommend that you get his book, Twilight in America, The Untold Story of Islamic Terrorist Training Camps, right here inside America. Uh, calls are welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. While we have just a few moments here before I take some more of your calls, I'd like to remind everybody about Scarrow's Meats once again. Don Scarrow was on just a few minutes ago, and they're going to sponsor the weather right now at 331 North Road, Jerome. The number to call, 324-7657, or you can go to their website, scarrowsmeats.com. They are changing the way we eat one day delicious bite at a time and be sure and check out what he mentioned that buckboard bacon leaner and more economical than traditional bacon and it is good right now here's gina with the weather we are just in front of a storm front that happens to be moving in it's going to be warm today but the clouds are going to stick around and it's going to be a little bit breezy out of the southwest right around 13 miles an hour Cloudy skies for today, high of 67, tonight low of 46. Now tomorrow, that's when the rain showers are going to kick in, at least by the afternoon. Breezy as well out of the southwest, right around 13 miles an hour. 90% chance of rain showers, high of 60, overnight low of 40. Those rain showers will be sticking around for Saturday. And winds are going to be picking up as well out of the southwest, right around 20 miles an hour, high of 50, overnight low of 32. For Sunday, winds still going to be there out of the west, right around 25 miles an hour, mostly sunny skies. High of 50 with an overnight low of 29. That is your weather for Zebeth Ranch. And she does a great job. Thank you, Gina. I appreciate it. Scarrow's Meats, our sponsor of the weather. And they're located at 331 North Road in Jerome, 324-7657. They are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. You know... I was talking to Mr. Martin Moyer just a few minutes ago, and uh, this book, and I really, I urge you to go to the bookstore and try to find a copy, and it's called Twilight in America. I don't normally just absolutely keep on advocating buying a book, but this book absolutely tells exactly what's happened is it tells exactly what is happening and there are pictures verified pictures in the book of the various training sites of islamic jihadi uh groups right here in this united states of america texas new york etc read the book and then become much more aware of the terror and the scare that is right here in the united states please uh, calls are welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. Another thing I wanted to mention again is that our dear, dear friend Russell Smith is up, of course, at the Idaho State Veterans Home, and uh, he's going to be having a big, big birthday coming up on uh, next month, May 6th. He'll be 93 years of age, so God bless him. Well, let's make it a jam up birthday and start things now give him cards and letters and well wishes all you have to do is send those up to the idaho state veterans home at 1957 alvin ricken drive room 70 in pocatello and the zip code 83201 russell smith and that's in the Idaho State Veterans Home in Pocatello. I know he's listening this morning. He listens on the computer. God bless him. Russell Smith, thank you very much. All right, time for some calls. 436-224-1866-927-4587. And uh, we'll cover anything that you want to talk about for the remainder of the program this morning. So give me a jingle, and we'll discuss it. Uh, let's see what else have I got here. Um, one of the worries that I have, and I saw this note come across my desk this morning, is that Christianity is dying out in Europe and Islam is expanding in huge, huge numbers. Uh, 
Now, a new Pew Research study showed that deaths among Christians outnumbered births in Europe by almost 6 million between 2010 and 2015. And they said that Islam is growing ever faster than Christianity. Births to Muslims around the world outnumbered deaths 213 million to 61 million. And that's a natural increase of 152 million Muslims. And uh, yes, I am concerned. Yes, I am worried. And yes, we're going to keep repeat, reporting on those stories as they come across my desk. We were told, uh, who was it? Representative Stephen King of Iowa had uh, the same kind of a remark about how our heritage, our culture is dying out because our birth rates are lower and we're importing people from other country that basically are replacing our heritage and culture with their way of life it's something very scary for the united states of america don't forget your magic valley les schwab tire centers all seven locations serving you and serving is the correct word and especially during a great big spring tire sale that's going on right now oh my goodness all the tires for your cars and your pickups and your suvs on sale you better check it out today and don't forget that they are the best with brake service boy if you're going to take a little road trip you better go in and have those brakes checked or maybe it's the front end kind of pulling one way or the other we'll have that front end checked and of course the shocks and the struts and you need a battery that's going to turn the engine over well they take care of all of that and they will at your magic valley les schwab tire centers with lane and rupert dave on blue lakes and twin mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Daniel on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland and Burley. Yes, sir, they are the best. Your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. I've enjoyed the week, and we certainly enjoyed having you be a part of the program with all your calls, etc. And I thank all my guests and the callers and everybody else. We're going to be back here again next Monday at 8.06 and ride the horse for three hours. Zeb at the Ranch from 8 to 11 on K-Bar, 1230 a.m., and then streaming live on the Internet. And that's, of course, ZebBell.com, and we invite you to become a listener. Don't forget to tune in next Monday at 8.06, where we always say the way things were are the way things ought to be. God bless. We'll see you then.